Welcome to Groups This Week. As a church, we exist to help all people become fully devoted followers of Jesus. We believe doing life together is a crucial part of that journey. During this time, we're going to unpack and dig deeper into the sermon we heard this past week. Let's dive in as we continue to grow in our faith, knowledge, and love of Jesus together. All right, well, hey, community groups. Um, this past weekend, we were continuing in our first John series. Yeah. And what, what was our passage, Seth? Uh, we're looking at First John chapter 4, the, the second part of chapter 4. You get the first section. Yeah, last week. Center. Down center, and drop fortune, and then... Uh, the other spots and uh and now we're looking at the second half so the first part being about truth the importance of truth mm-hmm. talked about false teachers and that sort of thing and now we're coming back to the theme of love which john keeps coming back to all throughout the letter obviously a big theme that john wants us to hear and i feel like you keep getting these particular sermons on love love yeah. one another love from god all this and pretty beautiful text yeah yeah and so maybe like, yeah, the first question I want to ask Sam then is like, I think we, like we, we see a lot about truth and love and, uh, you know, between like last week's passages that I was preaching on versus one to six about killing, it's really important to have like correct doctrine. And then we see just the call to love. And so my question is like, how do love and truth go together? Mm-hmm. How do we make those work well? It's a good question, and and I think a lot of times we have pinned those two against each other. Uh, but I don't I don't think that is the case, and that's certainly not what John has in mind. That you're either a you know a love person or a true person, and two should be married. I think sometimes in the name of being loving, mm-hmm. we've avoided the truth, right? so we just don't we don't share what's true with people, um, whether it's what we see in them, um, or you know calling out sin in another person's life or because we don't want to offend, or we don't want to hurt, we would be loving, so we don't say the truth. Um, on the, the flip side of that, you have people whose personality would be such that um, truth is is ultimate, I will say the truth and speak my mind. So I, I think if, if we look at love as, as care and kindness towards another person, then as we share the truth, we're not sharing the truth to get it off our chest or to... Um, to to just beat them like you know Bible thump a person and, mm-hmm. and just um, you know hammer them over the head with the truth. We're doing it because we we legitimately want the best for that person, mm-hmm. and so we're willing to say hard stuff, possibly offensive stuff. But if if our desire is care for that person, um, then we will deliver that with the most gentleness and kindness and humility that we possibly can. So I don't know if that really answers the question, but it's like holding truth, holding love, and saying, I'm going to, I'm going to try to carry these, these two things together. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, I think I just, I think Jesus as our example, right? Like, um, what's that verse? I think it's in John where it says like, he's full of grace and truth, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, like if we are carrying the truth of Christ without the grace and the love yeah. of Christ, that yeah. or the opposite, the love of Christ without truth, like it, it just doesn't work, right? Well, and Paul talks about it at First Corinthians mm. and have you know I can say all these these crazy things, but if I don't have love, it's just a planning gong and a resounding so so annoying because people are uh, the the posture of our heart as we deliver those things it is so important mm. that it's coming from a posture of love or it means nothing. It's exactly. useless. Yeah, I feel like it's almost like the pendulum has swung a bit. Like I feel like maybe ten years ago, like so much was like on apologetics and like being able to defend our faith and things mm-hmm. like that, that we were like really heavy on truth and like to the point where, I don't know, it just says I would kind of like see or observe. Sometimes people would just come across as like kind of abrasive, like in the way that they would share their faith, almost like mm-hmm. there to, to just like defend God um, and just like get the truth out there, but like not doing so in gentleness. And now it's like, okay, are we on this side of like, we're going to try to be so loving that we're actually just like tolerant mm. and we're not like saying truth, but, um, and both are dangerous. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Sam, the next question, um, I'm thinking is just around like the idea of like loving one another. Mm-hmm. I think we can hear the call like in a sermon to, okay, we're, we're, we're exhorted to, to love one another. And then, 
either it's just like we're so easy to forget or love is just a slow process um, in mm -hmm. becoming people of love. And it can feel like, we, yeah, I'm here in the ceremony and then we go back to our week and we're just the same people all over a tent. Mm -hmm. And so my question is like, how do we, what does loving one another look like practically? And how do we like allow this to really seep into our yeah. hearts? Yeah. Well, one of the things I love most about this passage, um, you know, chapter four mm -hmm. is that, is that John actually talks about, he doesn't just say love each other, but he points out that, that our love actually flows out of receiving love from the father. Mm -hmm. So even though he starts this section he says, beloved, love one another. So as those who are loved, as those who are already loved, then go and love each other. And then he continues to unpack that saying, you know, we, we know love if we know God because we've received it from him. And so I, I think of it kind of like, um, you know, a, a glass of water or maybe a glass with no water in it. A lot of times I think we try to pour out love when there's nothing in our cup. And so there's, so, so we can try in our own efforts to love people or like, okay, I hear that message. I'm going to try to love again, but there's nothing. If you have experienced the love of God, mm -hmm. if you have, if you're not overflowing. And so I think what John is advocating for is, is this experiential love of the father actually knowing. And that word know that he uses isn't, isn't to know intellectually. Uh, the word know, uh, as it's translated from the Greek, is actually this like knowing like a husband and wife know each other. Yeah. This deep intimacy of like, like I, I know this person, I know God. As we know his love, it's like the water in a cup is, is flowing in and overflowing. And then I think that's where our life begins to, um, we begin to carry out that same love that's been poured into us. It just overflows into our life. So I think when we struggle to love others, it's probably that we don't we haven't been basking in the love of God ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a great starting place is, is for us to, to remember, to sit and to reflect on it. And, you know, God himself is love. We talked about on the weekend, um, all these different, um, aspects of that, that, that John writes about that, that God's love is ontological. Like it is mm -hmm. very core, the essence of who God is, is love. It's sacrificial that he would go to the cross and come. It's, incarnational and so i all, all these different things it's it's transformational as we experience the love of god we are transformed and so i think i think rather than us trying to be more loving mm -hmm. is to get around the loving god yeah is to spend time with him it's to let his love shape us now there is an effort part to it there's an aligning ourselves but it's kind of this imitation yeah. And I become like the people I hang out with. I see this happen to me all the time. The people I spend time with start to form the way that I talk and um, things that I, you know, the Netflix shows I watch because we talked about it and they built such a case for it. And, um, and so I, I think the thing is, is get around God through scripture and prayer and, and being in his presence and um, reflect on the love of God towards me. Mm -hmm. and then let that shape the way that I love others. Let my cup overflow into the world around me. Mm -hmm. And then, well, really well said. And, and I think it even ties into a little bit about what I was even saying last week on the whole um, first John 4, 1 to 6 on truth is like, it's the same thing, right? Like the way that we grow in our awareness and knowledge of the truth is by getting near the good shepherd, right? And he's the voice of truth. Yeah. He's also, you know, our example of what love looks like. And mm -hmm. so I think it's just, the call is to abide. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and so to, to get back to your original question, I'm like, why doesn't this stuff seem to be taken root in our lives? I think because the very thing that's going to transform us is the first thing that seems to go in the midst of busyness of life mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just the chaos of life in a Western world. It's like time alone with God uh, or seeking to find him in the everyday stuff that we're doing. And it's kind of pushed out to the margins because we have stuff to do and kids to raise and gymnastics to get into whatever it is for, for you and your family. And so I think the call is, like you said, is to abide, is to return to, and this is where practices, um, like we talked about back in January in the prayer series, like prayer of examining can yeah. be so helpful just to look back on the day and say, God, where was, where's there evidence of your love for me mm -hmm. in and through the day? And, and what, what, how should that affect my tomorrow, right? Yeah. Practices like prayer of examine, then look back at, at some of that, um, that we, that we did back then. 
um, in the prayer guide. Um, and then just practices built into our life and the rhythms of our day where we pause and, and get back to that place of uh, intimacy with God. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I know some really practical things we can do, Sam, and just reminding us of like the truth that really it's about being with the Lord and that, and then it all overflows from that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think like to camp out on like a final question here is like, we see at the end of chapter four, um, that John says there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. What is he talking about here? Like, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, uh, what a beautiful promise for for those who are, you know, fearful of the future or anxious. Is that as we experience the love of God, that it casts like that fear cannot coexist with love. And uh, and the more we we grow in our understanding of God's love, the, the more our fear fades away. I'm um, in this specific section was talking about final judgment and uh, the fear of like, um, am I one with God? Am I a child with Pan? Am I? And he says, once you've experienced the love of God, you know that you are that you, you have the Spirit in you. You have this this resonance with God that you are His and He is yours. And so all fear of the future can fade away because we know um, that we're loved by God and. Uh, what would you put you at to Yeah, uh, I think just, you know, thinking of like a human analogy, it's like when we're, I think when, when we're like afraid of, you know, if it's being judged or just like afraid of like not fully being ourselves, like we're, we're operating out of fear. And yet when we know that we're like fully loved by that person in the midst of like, you know, our inadequacies or um, idiosyncrasies or whatever, uh, it removes that fear, right? Yeah. So I think like, okay, how much more then, like in a relationship with God, where it's like, he's made us, like we're in his image, like he not just loves us, but he likes us too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it's like, okay, like knowing that like I have the love of my father that has been poured into my heart allows me to just like, to be me. Yeah. And and to then not fear judgment as well. Yeah. Um, because he's, He's given his son, um, and that's what he docks all over rare sin in, 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 in the passage here. So, I don't know, it might be a couple thoughts, but it's great. Yeah. Well, so much here. And I uh, hope this this little conversation can spur on further conversation in your groups as you uh, as you talk through this stuff. We want to be a people of love mm-hmm. and people who are shaped by the love of God. And so maybe even take time today in your groups mm-hmm. and, and pray that you would experience the love of God and then that would flow into the way that you live and so on thanks Sam yeah love you guys we hope you enjoyed the teaching today if you're wanting to follow along with our community groups discussion guide with your group you can head to cachurch.ca slash media where you can find the discussion guide not only are there questions there related to the sermon but there's also prayer prompts that relate to the passage or the topic that we were talking about and practices that you can, on an individual level or a group level, begin integrating into your life to not only bring this knowledge into your mind, but to begin living it out.